What is up everyone, Lexi Gavin here, and today we are gonna do a hand review of a live stream that I played on at The Lodge Live in Round Rock, Texas. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard, I think the secret is out, but Texas is booming for poker right now. It really is exploding. The games are amazing, so if you have a chance, I would strongly recommend taking a trip there. The cash games are good, the tournaments are great, It's and it's just like an overall fun experience because I feel like people from Texas are just the nicest people on the planet. So I love playing there. Let's get into the live stream. You can actually find this one on YouTube. Uh, I think the whole, the whole live stream is up there. Um, we are playing a 2-5 no limit cash session. Uh, there were quite a few straddle pots uh, and yeah whole bunch of fun hands so let's get into it all right so let's play this hand here we have um king 10 off in the small blind the poker gypsy he is uh i believe he's a youtuber he's a very fun player as you can see from his aesthetic he's got uh quite the look going right there <laughs> he limps the button here with ace jack off um, I personally don't love limping the button here with his ace jack. I think I would probably raise this up. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm in the king, I'm in the small blind with king 10 off. I decide to raise it up here to 50 thinking that the poker gypsy isn't very strong here. And I have, uh, John on my left here, he is the uh, president of Poker Atlas. If you don't know Poker Atlas, it's a really useful tool that will help you figure out what tournaments are in your area. So make sure to check that out. Uh, it's an app I believe you can download. So, um, all right, so here we are. We have King 10 off. So considering Poker Gypsy just limped the button, I think that we want to um, raise it up here with King 10. We want to disincentivize John here in the big blind from calling, and we want to isolate this to a heads up pot versus the poker gypsy. But here, John wakes up with King Queen and does come in for the call. I like him just calling here. Um, he could three bet this for value sometimes, but I think that if I were him, I just, I do prefer the call. The poker gypsy also calls as well, and we have the King 5 deuce with hearts uh two hearts flop uh i definitely like c betting here as for sizing there's 150 in the pot and um i like going small here uh it's a pretty besides the heart draw it's a pretty dry texture we don't really have to worry about anybody having straight draws here because i think hands like three four are folding pre-flop certainly all of the offsuit three four combos are going to be folding pre-flop um so there's really not too much to worry about and we have top pair, which means we block top pair, which means we block a lot of their calling range. So the reason you want to choose a small sizing here is to incentivize them from floating or calling wider on the flop, right? So when we go small here, so we're going uh, 55 here, when we go 55, then I think we're going to have some more like ace high floats, maybe a hand like um, ace ace eight of spades would call here or something like that um you know hand like pocket threes pocket fours would call whereas if we had bet uh, a little bit bigger like half pot or 60 percent pot then those lighter floats those lighter calls are going to be folding the flop so we go small here and of course because john has flop top pair with second nut kicker uh, he is going to come in for the call as well poker gypsy does fold and now I am heads up with John to the turn. So the turn here is a three. Now I think for a little bit, and I believe I check, right? So the reason I am checking here is because when John cold calls my raise preflop, I do think he is going to have a lot of hands like king, queen, king, jack that beat me. Um, if I bet here, I don't necessarily think I'm going to be getting called by worse considering I raise preflop and I C bet into two people. I mean, if he had a hand like pocket nines, pocket tens, there is a good chance that he does call one more straight, but I don't think that I'm going to get three straights of value um, with this hand. And if I were to bet, I, th I think that I would kind of be value owning myself, like value betting myself. Um, because like I said, I don't think there's like much worse that can call. So if he had checked back the turn, then I am going to be barreling a lot of rivers for value. 
because when he checks back the turn, I, I, um, I definitely think he could have a hand like, you know, an under pair to the king, like sevens, eights, nines, that might call a bet on the river because we checked the turn. But it looks like he is going in for the bet. So there's 260 in the pot and he bets. 125. So when we check this turn, we're never checking to give up. We're not checking to check fold, right? Our hand is still pretty strong. Um, in the event John just had hearts or something, um, I could see him um, putting in the bet here once we check to him on the flop, especially if he had hearts with like no showdown value. So um, like if he just had like, like, like jack 10 of hearts or something um i can definitely see him betting here whereas if he had like a hand like ace three of hearts um he might check back because he has some showdown value with the three um but he is betting here like i said i am not giving up especially being that i don't block any of the heart combos so we are going to give it a call my plan here um is if the river is not a heart we are probably going to be calling most rivers i think like i said i think our hand is a little bit too strong just to fold we definitely can consider folding um because like i said he is going to have like king queen and king jack uh pretty frequently i don't think he has ace king because he didn't re-raise us pre-flop so really there's only i mean of, and of course he can have the set so he can have set of uh set of eight set of threes um, I don't really think he has a set of fives because I don't think he's going to be calling that on the flop when I see bet into two people. Like if it were me, I'd probably just fold like like a hand like pocket fives or and deuces. Um, and I don't think he has any two pairs. So I don't think he has king eight or king three or eight three because those hands would be folding uh, pre-flop. And uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah, so... I don't know. I thought for a little bit and I I did end up making the call here um, just because I think that he is bluffing hearts pretty frequently. And like I said, we don't block hearts. And uh, when the big blind flats, the big blind can always have a lot of flush draws because they're calling more suited combinations than, than we are opening, right? Because the big blind is more incentivized to call with, you know, suited, you know, suited hands like king three suited, king eight suited, ace five suited, uh, whereas we're not going to be um, isolating the limp pre-flop with a hand like king three suited, king eight suited. So, um... So we do end up making the call and uh, well played by John. I kind of think that there really was nothing much to do with this hand. Um, just kind of a little bit of a cooler. Okay, so here we have a raise on the button from the poker gypsy. He has four three of diamonds. He raises to 150. I believe this pot was... Um, a straddle and a double straddle. I think the blinds are 5, 10, 25, 50. So the poker gypsy raises it up to 150 here, and I am on the button with pocket kings. I raise it up to 500. So I like my uh, sizing here. I think anywhere between three times his bed or a little bit higher is good. Um, because of all the straddles, the effective stacks are shorter, so no need to go too big here. Um, but the reason I wanted to talk about this hand is because I think that this is one of those situations where it's okay um, trapping with kings here on the button. So calling here on the button is also fine. And the reason for that is because we have two very aggressive players still left to act on our left. Uh, we have Landon Tice and we have the Poker Traveler who are both very solid, aggressive players. And I know that they're capable of cold four betting me um, polarly. So to incentivize them from either calling or four bet squeezing here, um, I think flatting is pretty, is fine. Um, especially versus, uh, the poker, 
um, gypsy, the, we have the poker traveler and the poker gypsy. The poker gypsy is the guy that just opened the cutoff. Um, because his range is pretty wide in the cutoff, um, I think that that's another reason why we could be uh, trapping here with kings. Um, but we decided to three bet, which I think is definitely fine. But like we suspected, we did squeeze out everybody on our left. We actually got a really tight fold from uh, the poker traveler here who folded ace, queen of spades, which um, is questionable on on his part just because I, I know that he knows that I'm capable of three betting pretty wide here on the button, uh, especially versus um, a, a tighter player in the cutoff. So because I'm certainly capable of three betting um, a, a, a completely wide range here, you know, we have all of our strong hands that we're going to be three betting, plus we're going to be three betting uh, a lot of our weaker connected hands like Jack 10 off, uh, King 10 off, hands that are a little bit too weak to flat. Uh, we could also be three betting, you know, some some ace combos like ace five off, ace five suited even. Um, so because he because Poker Traveler knows that I am going to be three betting wide here, I think he might have, I think he could have either called or four bet to be honest. Um, but he did decide to make a very tight fold, which I was very surprised about. So let's see what the poker gypsy decides yeah, to do here. Something. Something from Finding Nemo. Poker clubs in Austin. In so the poker gypsy does wind up making the fold. Good fold by him because... Yeah, that would have been pretty bad for him. <laughs> All right, so that is just one example of how you, you know, a, a flat on the button with kings is appropriate uh, sometimes. More so when you have aggressive players on your left. If I had uh, a weaker hand, like king queen off that I wanted to three bet or that, like a hand like king queen off I'm more inclined to three bet because I have aggressive players on my left because I know that they're going to squeeze me off my hand at some frequency so something to consider okay so I want to talk about this hand with Landon Tice so he opens here with queen jack of hearts in middle position <coughs> excuse me uh he gets three bet on by Joel on the button with ace king off. So Landon opens to 40, Joel three bets to 150. I like this sizing. Uh, somewhere between three and four X is good. And then the poker gypsy cold calls a three bet in the big blind with Jack 10 of clubs. Um, I think this is okay uh, because we are deeper. Um, and I do think that, uh, Joel is, he's a very good player and he's definitely capable of three betting, uh, a wide range on the button. So I think cold calling from the big blind is, is fine. Um, now that poker gypsy did call, I think Landon is more incentivized to come in for the call as well. Not that I think that he would fold, uh, the queen jack of hearts to one three bet preflop, um, regardless. So. He's just getting a little bit better of a price. So um, pretty good flop for the poker gypsy there. It checks to the three better. Uh, Joel does decide to check back. So I want to talk about Joel's check here on the flop. I really like this. Uh, this is not a very favorable flop for ace king. Uh, this is much better for his opponent's range uh, than his. Um, the big blind, uh, and Landon can both have, um, some nine combos, uh, definitely queen jack type combos, uh, a lot of tens in their range. Um, especially the poker gypsy. I think poker gypsy is going to have, um, a lot of nine, 10 suited combos, uh, maybe hand like ace, 10 suited, things like that. So, um, good check by, uh, by Joel. Uh, if this was higher cards, I think a C bet would be, would be better. Uh, it checked around uh, now to Landon, who is going to bet 350 with his open-ended straight draw. Um, I like that he uh, is betting this turn. He only has queen high. He can improve to a straight. Um, and like I said, he can favor this range pretty well. So uh, I definitely like the bet. I like the sizing. Joel makes a good fold here. Let's see what Poker Gypsy does. 
Poker Gypsy makes the call. Uh, yeah, Poker Gypsy is certainly not going anywhere with the clubs and the uh, top pair. Now, I think that um, Gypsy could have led the turn, um, but I think checking checking is also fine. Um, he could certainly get value from uh, Queen Jack type hands, which is why he could have led the turn. But he does block block some of those Queen Jack combos, so I think a check or a bet on the turn is fine. So, so this is interesting. So Land and Bets 350 and Poker Gypsy is raising now, which is very strange. Uh, this line doesn't make that much sense. I think that um, a check, check, raise looks a little fishy. I think that once the flop checked around, uh, I think that the Poker Gypsy should be betting uh, a lot of his nine combos. Um, just for protection. Um, so I, I do think this is a little suspect. I don't think that Landon is going to go anywhere, especially considering it's only a min raise to him. But he does make the fold. So good fold by Landon. Um, yeah, if this was me, I might find a call to the min raise. I guess it's fine to fold just because, um, I, yeah, I guess a fold is fine because you kind of have to take out some of your um, straight outs. Like if uh, if the king or eight of clubs came on the river, then Landon has improved to a straight, but could just be drawing dead to a flush. So yeah, I think it's a good uh, good lay down by Landon. All right, so here we have uh, Jackov. He has pocket tens under the gun. Uh, there are no straddles in this pot, so he raises it up to 50. The poker gypsy calls under the gun one with jack nine of clubs. I have king of clubs, jack of spades. I come in for the call as well. Uh, it wouldn't be terrible to fold here, but I am definitely not in the business of folding, especially on a live stream. <laughs> Gotta give the people a show, you know? So everyone else folds, and we see a pot three-way to the flop. Queen, 10, 4, rainbow. Uh, Jackoff has flopped middle set and decides to check it, which is very sneaky here. Uh, checks to me, and I am going to bet the open-ended straight draw here. Once they both check, uh, I don't really presume them to have anything too strong. Now, granted, uh, I was wrong because he was slow playing a set, but if I were him... Uh, if I were jack off with the set, I would continue um, betting here. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, one, when I flop middle set, um, I typically uh, don't trap. I, I fast play it a little bit more because you're not blocking top pair. So when you're not blocking top pair, you're not blocking your opponent's calling range, right? So, um, and with Poker Gypsy flatting on his left and me flatting on his left, I think that we both can have a lot of queens in our range. Uh, I think we can both have a lot of uh, queen jack, uh, uh, queen 10, queen 9 type hands, maybe even queen 8 suited if we're really loose. Um, so there's just a lot of hands that I think that Jackoff could get could get value from. Uh, plus, uh, his hand does require a little bit of protection. I know that there is no flush draw, but there are uh, some straight draws out there, which he doesn't block either of them. So King Jack, Jack Nine um, are definitely possible. Uh, even Ace Jack for a gut shot. Um, so I, if I were him, I would um, definitely see bet here for value and a little bit of protection. Uh, but he decides to check. I do bet 105. Um, and Jackoff, I believe, calls. Yep, so he calls. So he is still uh, trapping this. And Poker Gypsy calls as well. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with Poker Gypsy's call um, at all. He's, he's also flopped open-ended, just unfortunately for him, the lower end. Uh, so checks to me. There's 489 in the pot. Now, I think this could go either way. Um, I do believe I end up c-betting here, but I don't hate checking um, just because I um, our opponents could definitely have some queens in their range, which they're most likely not going to be folding once I do bet. So um, 
So that's like one argument for checking back. I could just check back and hope to realize my straight equity on the river um, because I don't necessarily think I'm getting folds by uh, king, queen, and ace, queen, and queen, jack. I didn't really think that Jackoff had too many queens because he just checked the flop. So, I mean, he could be pot controlling with like ace, queen, but I don't, I don't really see why he would do that. I would imagine he would see bet a hand like ace, queen, and, and uh, king, queen, and queen jack. I mean, queen jack might check, but certainly see betting ace, queen, and king, queen. So I didn't really think that he had too many queens. And uh, I didn't block any of the 10s. I do block some of the 10 combos like king 10 and jack 10. Um, but I, I just thought, you know, I have king high. I could improve to a straight. They could get, you know, I could get folds from the both of them. Um, I didn't, I wasn't too afraid of jack offs range just because like, like I said, ace queen, you know, aces and kings most likely are going to be C betting there, especially because, um, the poker gypsy and I could both have a lot of queen and 10 combos that he could get value from if he did have aces and kings. So I think this could be a check back, but I did decide to bet. And if I am going to bet, I like going big, which I did. Uh, I bet 350. Um, because again, I only have king high and I really do want the fold. So I don't want to go small here and, send, and incentivize them for, uh, for calling. I believe that if I had bricked the river, if they had called and I bricked the river, I'd probably just give up. But if I had chosen a smaller sizing on the turn, then I would probably end up following through with more rivers because they're going to have wider calls when I choose a smaller sizing on the turn. So I could probably get a hand like ace 10 to fold if I bet big on the river. But uh, the jack off now is deciding to put in the raise. It's just a min raise to me, so I'm never going anywhere here. He's just given me way too good of a price to draw out on him, uh, which, spoiler alert, I do end up getting there. <laughs> it's always so much fun to hit the gin card. Love it so much. Here I was just like praying that he had a hand like ace queen. Now, as played, if I were jack off, I certainly would keep betting here. Um, I think my range looks a lot like ace queen and king queen. Um, if I had ace queen, like I would likely three bet it, but he did raise from early position, so I do flat that sometimes. Um, so he decides to check, which is really interesting. Obviously, I'm going to be betting for value here. So there's 1,900 in the pot. Let's see what sizing I go with. Um, I think that I probably, I honestly don't remember what I wound up doing, but I'm thinking now that I should probably go for a slightly larger sizing just because he did check raise me on the turn. Um, so I think anywhere between a little over half pot and like 70% pot would be good. Um, you don't want to go too big. Let's see, what did I do? I went 975. Okay, so about half pot. You don't want to go too big here because um, the ace could be a scare card. So in the event he had uh, king queen, then he might fold to the ace river. Um, I don't think he has king jack very often because he didn't continuation bet it. Um, so I think this, my sizing might have been a little bit too small. I probably could have gone a little bit bigger. Uh, if I had known he was trapping with a set, obviously I would have bombed it. <laughs> So yeah, unfortunate river for him, but he uh, probably should have just continuation bet the flop. And uh, when he did check raise me, he probably should have gone bigger on the turn as opposed to just a min raise, which is basically pricing me in, pricing me in uh, to calling with all of my draws. All right, so here I have ace, six of hearts in the hijack. I decide to raise it up. There are no straddles this hand. So I raise it up to $40 and I get a call from the poker traveler who has 10-9 offsuit in the big blind. Uh, keep in mind, poker traveler is a very aggressive player, so I always consider that when I'm playing against him. King deuce deuce uh, with 
two diamonds and a heart. I have backdoor hearts and only ace high. So I do like a C bet here. There's 94 in the pot and I bet 30. I like betting about a third pot here just because uh, the poker traveler is going to have bricked this very often. Uh, there's not, you know, it's, it's a very, I mean, besides the diamond draw, there's really no other draws. It's a very dry texture. Um, if he had a hand like 10-9, I would imagine he would just throw it away. But he does end up getting stubborn here. So he decides to call with nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and uh, I hit a six of diamonds on the turn. And he decides to lead here. So I think that this is uh, just a really... Uh, no offense to Poker Traveler, but a pretty weak play here. Um, I mean, I don't really see him leading with too many of his king combos, and I don't think he's got any really strong king combos because he just flatted the big blind. Um, so I don't think he really has ace, king, king, queen, things like that. Uh, maybe He's probably flatting king jack, but I don't really see why he would lead the turn there. So to me, it just kind of looks like he has uh, either nothing and is just trying to take it down on the turn, or maybe he has like more of a vulnerable hand, like pocket fives, like black fives or something uh, that he's hoping to get a bet, you know, a, a fold out on the turn by me. Um, he might also think that I'm just like c betting this board with 100% of my range, which I pretty much am. So uh, maybe not aces. I might not c bet aces here um, or ace king. Uh, just because I don't necessarily think I'd be getting three streets of value. But my point is, I just don't really believe him. So if this turn was anything other than a six or an ace, I probably would consider raising here. Uh, and again, I don't think he ever has a flush because like, why would he lead a lead a flush here? Um, maybe he's going to be leading some of his weaker flushes, but I would imagine that he would um, just trap more with that and either check call or check raise, probably check raise. Um, so if this wasn't an ace or a six, uh, you know, which has now given me showdown value, I probably would have raised a lot, especially if it was like a high card, like a queen or a jack. And he led, um, then I really, really wouldn't believe him. <laughs> so I would probably put in, um, maybe like a $300 raise here, but I do end up making the call. I obviously, I'm not going to be, uh, ever folding here. Um, Especially since I take him as weak. All right. So the river is the nine of hearts. Uh, and he decides to check. So when he checks, now I, um, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to turn my hand into a bluff. I think when he checks, he is more inclined to have some sort of showdown value, which he does. I think that if he didn't pick up a pair of nines, he's pretty much going to be betting every river, in which I would probably make a, a, pretty, a pretty loose hero call versus him. Um, if it was a diamond river, then I certainly would fold, uh, just because I do see him leading the turn with a lot of his like, uh, naked diamonds, maybe just like, maybe he just has like the ace of diamonds or like queen of diamonds or something that he's leading the, the turn with. So if it was a diamond, I'm probably folding, uh, if, um, considering he's checking, I'm always going to be checking back. And if it was anything other than a diamond, uh, or like a king, I probably would um, just bluff the, or just uh, hero call him on the river. But I do end up checking back, uh, and he rivered me. All good. <laughs> Interesting hand by the poker traveler. Okay, so here we have Jackoff, who is calling with king eight of spades. <laughs> Under the gun plus two, poker gypsy also limps, and I decide to limp behind with jack eight of diamonds here. A little bit loose, but I think uh, calling uh, in position on the more recreational players is fine. Plus, like I said, I am not in the folding business on a live stream. All right, so we have quite a multi-way pot here. There are six players to this flop. <laughs> flop is nine, ten of spades, deuce of hearts. So I have flopped the lower end of the straight draw here. 
Checks to the poker gypsy who bets 50 with his top two pair. Um, I definitely like betting if I were him. Uh, he certainly has to worry about protection from the flush draws and the straight draws, which he blocks neither of. Um, I am with so many players in the hand. I think that there's so many different ranges he can get value from. Uh, certainly a lot of 10 combos, ace 10, king 10, queen 10, all of those hands should be calling. Uh, so I like his bet. Sizing's a little big. He went almost the size of the pot. Uh, I think he bet 50 into 60. So if I were him, yeah, somewhere around $45. I probably would have gone 50 isn't bad at all. Um, I decide to call here with the open-ended straight draw. Now with the hand like this, uh, especially so multi-way, um, I have to assume that I do have to get there because like I said, we are against up against so many different ranges and in a, in a limped pot, um, I do think that this, uh, nails a lot of their, uh, limping range. Um, and I don't limp behind very often, but a hand like Jack eight of diamonds, I don't want to necessarily isolate preflop and, and bloat the pot with Jack eight. Uh, so like I said, I decided to come in for the call. But so I do have to be uh, kind of cautious with my draw here. Uh, but obviously I am going to I'm going to make the call. And, you know, when he is when Gypsy is betting into uh, five other players, you have to give him some credit. You do have to give him uh, more credit than if this was like a heads up pot or a three way pot. So the turn is the five of diamonds. I did brick out here. Um, so poker gypsy does continue the aggression. He bets 400 into 860. Now I thought about this for a little bit. I know I have the open end straight draw, but I, um, you have to consider the fact that because there's two spades on the, on the flop, if I do end up improving to the straight, but, uh, the, the queen or the seven are spades, um, then I could just be drawing dead to a flush. So do, and I'm, I'm also drawing to the lower end of the straight. So I, I could be drawing really thin, uh, versus queen jack. So, um, just considering he's betting into so many players on, a, a board that I do think that I have to end up getting there and I do have to eliminate some of my outs, um, because of the spades, uh, I end up making the fold here. I think that if this was like a, t like a heads up or a three way pot, I, I can consider raising the flop sometimes. I definitely like a raise on the flop, especially if I had um, like if there if the deuce of hearts was a deuce of diamonds. Uh, I like raising it even more because I could continue barreling on on all uh, diamond turns, and I can obviously improve to the straight. So I wound up making the fold. Uh, Jack off here decides to call with his spade draw. He bricks and decides to just check. Pretty surprised that Poker Gypsy here decided to check back. If I were him, uh, yeah, I know that uh, Jack 8 gets there, but I think like, like I did, I think a lot of Jack 8 combos fold the turn. So if I were a Poker Gypsy, I probably would have bet the river for value now. Um, you know, if, if Jack off didn't have a spade draw and just had like a, a King 10 type hand, uh, he might make a hero call, uh, thinking that poker gypsy could have, could be betting bricked spades. So I think I would have gone for value, um, versus Jack off. I don't think the poker gypsy has to worry about, um, like, bet like, uh, sets here. Um, because I think a set would have raised either the flop or the turn. So I think Poker Gypsy missed out on a little bit of value here, but not, not the worst check. All right, so let's take a look at a hand between the Poker Traveler and Landon Tice. So it looks like Landon decided to straddle under the gun to 20, uh, I'm sorry, decided to straddle to 25 and Poker Traveler under the gun makes it $105 with pocket queens here. So folds around to Landon. And Landon decides to make the call with 7-4 of spades defending his straddle. I like it, uh, especially considering that they are super deep. Uh, Landon sitting with, with 4K, Poker Travel has over 10K. Uh, so I like Landon's defend here. Um, 
to Poker Traveler. So uh, King Eight Six Two Spades, kind of a fun flop for for uh, Landon. Uh, if Poker Traveler had C bet, uh, I think Landon has a decision whether or not he's going to check raise or check call. He's certainly not going anywhere with his flush draw and gut shot. Um, I think because the fact that Poker Traveler can represent a lot of the kings, ace, king, king, queen, king, jack, king, 10, maybe king, nine suited. Um, I think that because of the king on the board, uh, there is argument for Landon to just check call if Poker Traveler had C-bet. Um, if this was like, uh, let's just say if this was eight, six, deuce with two spades, I like... Uh, a check raise on Landon's part if Poker Traveler had bet because uh, then the the texture of the board isn't threatening uh, versus the under the gun range because the under the gun range can have a lot of Broadway combos that miss the flop and and Landon can certainly represent uh, the range advantage there if it was uh, eight six two three six eight six three um, so. Think check raise for Landon uh, with a lower flop and a check call with the king high flop. Um, but this is all moot because Poker Traveler checked back the flop. <laughs> Just speaking in, you know, hypothetically. So eight of spade or eight of hearts on the turn here. I think if I were Landon, I would like a lead here. Uh, to me, it looks like Poker Traveler is aware that this is a pretty good board for the big blinds range in which he is trying to keep the pot small. Um, I also think his hand is a little transparent. I think uh, it certainly does look like tr Poker Traveler could have a hand like pocket nines, tens, jacks, queens, um, even some kings. Uh, I, I, I think kings, like his strong kings, might continuation bet here. Um, for protection from the flush draws, you know, and to charge Landon for his draws. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a draw heavy board. He's, you know, he's could be afraid of spades, nine, seven, five, seven. Um, Landon can also have some two pair combos that, that poker traveler can't like, um, eight, six, which is now improved to a boat on the turn. Um, and King eight suited as well. So, Poker Traveler definitely has to be uh, careful here with this bet. I do think he should call one straight because I think it would be uh, a little bit too passive for Poker Traveler to just check, uh, check, check, flop, check, flop, and then uh, fold the turn. So I do think he has to call one straight, which he does. And the river is a jack of diamonds. So now the question is, does Landon continue the bluff here? He has to assume he's never winning at showdown with his seven high. So it's either he has to bet or just check give up knowing he's going to forfeit. But that's not Landon's style. He goes for the gold here and he puts in the over bet. There was like 800 on the, there was like 800 and something in the pot. And he's betting 1500, which is pretty Awesome. I like the overbet here. This is putting so much pressure on the Poker Traveler to, to call with his queens here. Um, even if Poker Traveler just had a king, I mean, I'm sure he would find the fold just because so many of the draws bricked. This, um, this sizing on Landon's part is very, very polarizing. Um, I think that this is like screaming bricked draw or screaming the goods. I think that Landon certainly can have a lot of uh, eights in his range here. And like I said, he very well could have um, the the full houses that, that Poker Traveler can't have. Um, I think Poker Traveler uh, kind of capped his range when he bet the, f when he checked the flop, because I think a, a hand like top set of kings is going to be continuation betting versus that versus Landon and that texture of the board. So I think Landon pretty much knows that he kind of has probably like a middling pair, like pocket tens, maybe queens. Um, and yeah, so I, I really like this sizing um, on Landon's part. And like I said earlier, Landon certainly can represent all of the 
um, you know, a lot of the boats that that poker traveler can't have, like eight six suited, king eight suited, um, pocket sixes. I think pocket sixes would probably, if poker traveler had pocket sixes, I would imagine he would fold that that um, at some frequency under the gun, uh, especially um, considering that the table is pretty aggressive. So, yeah, this is pretty pretty cool by by Landon. I I really do like this bet a lot. Poker Traveler is going to have a big decision to make. So he thinks for a while here. I would too. Landon just looks so relaxed when he's bluffing. And he does lay it down. So really good fold by Poker Traveler. I mean, being results oriented, not a good fold by Poker Traveler. But if it were me, I would probably, I probably would have folded it just because, like I said, it's a really good, uh, really good board for Landon. Um, and that sizing, I mean, he just has to really, um, yeah, he has to really have it in order to call a sizing of that size. All right, everyone. So that wraps up the lesson slash review for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you like this stuff, you should go over and follow me on my social media accounts. I have a TikTok, Lexi Gavin Poker, Lexi with a Y, where I do almost daily poker tips and hand analysis. Um, so go over and check that out. I am also coming out with a YouTube channel soon. Uh, so that's in the work also at Lexi Gavin Poker. So go over there and subscribe and, and all that. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something and good luck in your games and I'll see you next time.